Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering NetApp Insight 2018. Brought to you by NetApp. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of NetApp Insight 2018. Lisa Martin with Stu Miniman, and guess who's here now? Dave Hitz, EVP and founder of NetApp. Dave, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. This is a big event. Uh, we were in the keynote this morning and when we were walking out, standing room only, really strong messages delivered by George Kurian, who stopped by for the first time a couple hours ago. Uh, great customer story, uh, the futurist was a very interesting perspective. 26 years ago, can you envision you know, the where futurist, you are? Never mind that. I have a very different perspective than him. I think we are entering the golden decade of artificial intelligence. It's smart enough to be super, super cool, and it hasn't figured out how to kill us yet. <laughs> decade. <laughs> that's Enjoy good. your last 10 years. Oh no, that's it? <laughs> I, no, no, you asked, you asked, could I envision this? Yeah. 26 years ago, oh my God, no, I mean, you know, we were a little startup, and we had these spreadsheets that said we would grow to, you know, it, it, basically that what the VCs told us, if we could get to 100 million in revenue, we could go public. So naturally, our spreadsheets showed 200 million <laughs> in <laughs> revenue, you know, an hour, five, six, somewhere in there, and it was like, oh no, we're so far beyond anything I imagined when we started. And, and we were doing technical nerdy products for little engineers and little work groups, you know, and the idea that that part of the storage market would merge against the heavy duty, high end enterprise storage market doing databases, and then that that would end up colliding with the cloud market and helping, like, no, we didn't even imagine the stuff that's happening now. I mean, it's so far beyond. So, so Enabling DreamWorks yeah. to make movies. I, I mean, love that. That was very You know, cool. they do showings, they do previews for their vendors, and so I've gotten to take my 11-year-old daughter, she's 11 now, but to see, you know, early viewings of some of these movies, it's, it's, it's just fun. So, Dave, it's always interesting. In the industry, a lot of times you say, like, okay, this architecture is long in the tooth, there's a new generation, do things better, and everything like that, on tap. Been around for a long time you now. Know, so Seems me, like it's been, you know, reinvigorated with the cloud and everything like that. You let know, me make a comment about that because yeah. people do this. Oh, ONTAP is so old. Isn't that the old generation? So let's talk about old. Mainframes are old, yeah. and AS 400s are old, and Unix is old, and then there's Windows, which is kind of younger, and ONTAP's younger than that. And then there's Windows NT, which was the rewrite of Windows, and clustered ONTAP is younger than that. So like, stop with the old. You know, I mean, iOS is after that, so okay, fine, we're, we're older than iOS, but it's, it's not an ancient, and, and then we've revamped it again to go run in the cloud. I mean, we first started doing ONTAP running in Azure, uh, sorry, in Amazon initially. Uh, we started that work in 2013 and shipped it in 2014, so like that was yet another refresh. Well, so. but you, you bring a point. You, you've, you've, it is adjusted and moved. It wasn't something that's static. Uh, can you speak a little bit to the, 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 that cloud, the, you know, the rewrite and focus around cloud and what, what that's mean internally? I, I know you've been reinvigorated uh, with <laughs> everything that's happened the last few years. You know, the cloud, everybody's doing it now and everybody's trying to be cloud relevant. We were really struggling early on. I will say, you know, 20, 2013, 2014, we were really trying to get our heads around what to do and a lot of people were stepping back like, no, 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 let's see if we can slow it down. And uh, I mean, not just outside of NetApp, but, but NetApp as well. And the guy who was the CEO at the time, Tom Georgians, and, and George Curran was part of the staff then. We, I'm proud of what we did, was we said, you know, let's really lean in. It's either going to happen or it's not going to happen, probably not based on what we do. And if it does happen, we'll be way better off leaning into it early, learning how to make this stuff work. And that's, you know, we shipped ONTAP in the cloud in 2014, and it sucked. I mean, and nobody else had anything like it. It was awesome, right? Whenever you look at old technology, the first iPhone sucked too, but it was both great, but it needed so much more work. Like the very first Rev, I remember a story, Joe Caradon is a programmer, he's like, we tried to get our own IT organization to use it, and they told us the security wasn't good enough, so we had to fix the security. Like, I mean, we've been through so much stuff, that's almost five years ago uh, that we've been working on it, and so you do all of this work, and then Cloud Volumes is a complete, have you guys had Anthony on? Yes, yes. a couple hours ago. I love how Anthony thinks. So uh, he's a cloudy guy, right from the foundation. He, he joins the executive staff, whole new perspective on stuff. So cloud on tap, 
Like, on tap's my baby, and we put it in the cloud. I'm proud of that. Like, yeah, we're forward leaning cloud, and Anthony's like, you know, just so you know, that's not nearly good enough. Like, that is a very old school infrastructural thing. Probably storage infrastructure people will like that they can have their same old OS running in the cloud, but it's not what cloudy people want. Cloudy people don't want to run a storage OS in the cloud. Cloudy people just want to say, I'd like a volume, please. Here's your volume, thank you. And by the way, it should be a RESTful API. Like, Cloud on top was none of those things. And so, if you look at the work we're doing now, it's like, okay, here's a RESTful API, here's the JSON schema, send it to the Azure Resource Manager. Like, that's cloudy. And, and, and so, and it was because, you know, I mean, we did a good job engineering getting it in, but we didn't, we didn't have that like, the, what does cloud smell like, if you know what I mean? Like the, the right whiff of cloud. Anyway, so Anthony really brought that, and I, and I just I feel really good about where we're at now, because it, it's like cloud developers develop this stuff for other cloud developers. It, it feels like that. Well, in the last five years, it sounds like a tremendous amount of transformation, um, reinvigoration. NetApp has some bold marketing messaging. We are the data authority. We help customers become data driven. You talk about these three business imperatives. Customers have lots of choices that, you know, public cloud, private cloud, hybrid. George talked about this morning in his keynote mm -hmm. that hi, uh, hybrid and multi-cloud is, is, is now de facto. It, you know, someone asked me, I was giving a talk, and they asked me, okay, so so much cloud, how long do you think till NetApp's not shipping hardware? And I was like, no, no, like we don't see that going away anytime soon. If anything, we think that our success in the cloud, because customers want to do that, will help us gain share on-prem because customers also want to do that, right? George's picture shows, yes, there's traditional on-prem IT, enterprise IT, there's private clouds, people, HCI, converged CI, and then there's public cloud. To me, the interesting question is, why do people do those different things? The number one driver for public cloud is innovation. Like if you just like, all the catchwords you can think of, if you want to start up a DevOps team to go program, I would like a new mobile phone app and I want it to take a picture of the person's face, oh look, it's a woman, she looks happy, and then you want it to listen to, her, to the voice and like transcribe the voice and then do a sentiment analysis on the words, oh she looked happy but it's snarky, and, and then you want to feed that into neural net, deep learning engine, and say well what should we try and sell her? Like I guaranteed you, the team working in the public cloud will beat the on-prem team hands down every time. Right, I mean that's, for, so when you look at people when they go, we want all in on the cloud, or there's got to be 100% cloud, my question is, well what, what's your pro, like don't start with that, what's your problem? If it's drive innovation, for the private clouds, typically that's just all about speed. They're so uniform, regular, they're all the same, you have extra capacity, you know you've got empty rack space for where the next one goes, someone says, I need some storage, and you say, hey, it's got a self-service software to find API, like just do it yourself. And then in the enterprise space, the, the enterprise IT, Unix, Windows, client, server, like that zone, probably the bulk of your investment, right? That's where you've been spending the money historically, probably still the bulk of most people's investment, but they want to modernize it. They don't want to get rid of it, they don't want to turn it off, it's working, but they, they'd like it to work better. So flash enable it, just get the performance issues out of the way. By the way, shrinks your footprint in the data center, frees up space, and connect it to the cloud. Like not moving it, but just back it up, or do DR, or like something cloudy. And so, to me, I look at those three goals are tightly linked to the three styles of infrastructure. Notice I haven't really talked about products yet. The conversations I like to have with customers these days help me understand what your business challenges are. You're trying to move faster, be more innovative, modernize the stuff you have, okay. Like what ratio, now let's talk about how we could do those things together with the data fabric and let you build the data fabric you need. I mean, our data fabric strategy is not to tell customers what to do, it's to help them build the data fabric they need for their needs based on, oh, we're all about innovation, all in on the cloud. Like, okay, fine, we can do that, like, but let's talk about that, or is it, yeah, anyway, you, now you, I'm stuttering. You bring up I, a great I'm point though, Dave. This stuff. Uh, it, it's really exciting, because you know, I think back, you know, just a couple of years ago, if you go to the enterprise, oftentimes storage was the boat anchor from prevent me from moving forward. Now, we know that data is absolutely going to be one of the drivers going forward. How do we help those people make that transition? How do you so, see NetApp driving so that transition? So boat anchor is an interesting word because I think if you look at the cloud compute, 
it's very easy to move compute into the cloud. Yes. Right, and, and the thing about compute is, it just happens and then it's done. Like you turn it on, you turn it off, you spin up a VM, you spin down a VM, it's easy. The reason that data is a boat anchor is not because it's a boat anchor, it's because data is the hard part. Like you fired up the compute in the cloud, but usually you're computing some data. Well, how'd you get the data to the place where the compute is? And then when you're finished, a lot of times you created some data. Well, how do you keep track of the data you created in the cloud? And is it legal for it to stay in the cloud? And now you want to put the data in a different cloud or put the data in your own data center. Like, who's watching all of that data? It's, it's not a boat anchor because data sucks. It's a boat anchor actually because it's the important thing you want to keep forever. Right, I mean, maybe you do, or you want to delete it and know for sure it's gone. Like, it, it, those kind, compute doesn't have any of those issues. So, what's my point? Whatever is hard, like if this was easy, anybody could do it, right? Whatever is hard, you go hire lots and lots of smart people to work on hard problems, and then customers are like, whoa, you're solving hard problems. I guess I will pay you after all. Right? Isn't that what business is? So the majority of your conversations start with helping customers identify what they've got, we're best to spread out their investments. It's not product-based, it's about business outcomes. I'd love to get, kind of in the last few minutes here, your perspective on NetApp's own IT and digital and cultural transformation. How does that help your legacy, long-time enterprise customers feel an even stronger trust with NetApp? I think prior to our cloud work, customers, for the most part, customers and potential customers, they knew us. It, you know, it was interesting, even as we thought about marketing the new work that we're doing, one of the questions was like, how much should be about the cloud, how much should be about the old stuff, and we've really leaned in almost 100% on telling people our new cloud stories, they're both public and private. And our VP of marketing, I think she had a really, Gina English, she had a really good perspective. She basically said, look, we've been telling the on-prem storage iron story for 26 years, and if there's a customer who's out there waiting to decide who to use, I don't think telling them that story again in year 27 is going to be the thing that makes the difference. Like, they, they've decided, they're happy with their Hitachi or their EMC, whatever it is, but, but they don't know that NetApp could help them in this brave new world, right? They have no clue that ONTAP's also running in Amazon. I mean, even I was like, seriously? I can run ONTAP in Amazon? Yeah, like, fire it up, it's five bucks an hour, whatever the number is. It's like, that's crazy, it, you know? And so, so, and then people go, well, We've had so many conversations where they're trying to get a cloud strategy together and we talk about all these things and data movement and data management and cloud insight, like just all of these tools and they're very excited about where they're trying to go and they said, you know, by the way, I do also have an on-prem storage need. Could you do me a quote for like what I need this week and meanwhile, let's do some planning about what I need next year, right? You've got both of them working together and I think it's that combo that's important. Last question. How do you, if only you had more energy and excitement like legitimately about this, but how do you keep some of the NetApp folks that have been here for a long time, how have you helped reinvigorate them to, to really be able to digest the massive impact that you guys are being able to make across industries? One of the things that I think helps, because there is, a, let me back up a step. You know, Steve Jobs, is such an awesome guy and also in his life he made so many mistakes. And one of the things that he did when, when Apple was in, almost entirely floated on their um, Apple III business, and was it Apple III, Apple II? And, and he was doing the Mac and basically his message to everybody else was, if you're not working on the Mac, you suck. Except by the way, that's the product that's floating the entire business and generating all the products. And I really was conscious of, like, like that's the wrong way to do it. And when I look, in particular of, of what we're doing, we've got new operating systems like E-Series and like Solid Fire, the HCI is a whole new thing, and yet ONTAP is still shot through our entire product line. I mean, the cloud volumes, the cool, hottest new thing, it's ONTAP under the covers, right? And you look at the HCI, it's got the Solid Fire block storage built in there as a very scalable model. Oh, but if you'd like files, guess what? We run on tap in a VM. It's HCI, it runs VM. And so actually, if you look at what's going on in there, the work that we've done going way back, and yes, it's evolved and it's changed, um, but that same work is actually shot through as technology, no longer the front piece, but it's shot through all of it as technology, so it is kind of a, a unifying characteristic. 
if you talk about that, I think it helps people get more comfortable, both internally, but we have the same, you know, you asked how do you get customer, uh, employees comfortable, a lot of customers have the same problem. You know, right. they've spent a lot of investment in learning on taps foibles over the year, and cloud volumes hides all of that, so, gee, maybe I don't like this. Like, you know what, if you need all those features, cloud on tap, you can run on tap, like, some people do want to do that. Um, so I, I just feel like, the fact that the pieces all fit together, work together, actually it gets people comfortable with it. Excellent. Well, Dave, thanks so much for stopping by Thank the Cube and me. sharing your energy and your excitement and your passion and all this wisdom and looking at where you guys are 26 years later. We look forward to year 27. Great. Thank you. We want to thank you for watching the Cube. I'm Lisa Martin with Stu Miniman. We are at NetApp Insight 2018 in Vegas. Stick around. Stu and I will be right back with our next guest.